let's queer up queer health. New study shows baby boomers are diagnosed with STDs at greater numbers. Why? A recent study by Far Health has uncovered a startling trend in sexually transmitted disease diagnosis among older adults, with a 4.8% increase observed from 2020 to 2023. Highlighting the data is a significant rise of 23.8% in STD diagnosis among patients age 65 and older, marking the largest surge across all age groups. Factors behind this vast differences include changing sexual norms, lack of awareness, and less frequent use of protective measures compared to younger generations. The findings are based on analysis of over, of over 47 billion commercial healthcare claim records. The statistic also indicates notable increases among patients aged 55 to 64, up by 16.2%. The fastest growing STD diagnoses include syphilis, which surged by 29.4%, gonorrhea by 16.8%, and HIV and AIDS by 14.1% over the study period. Moreover, patients aged 65 and older saw a remarkably 32.2% increase in HPV diagnoses. A particular concern is the disparity in diagnosis rates between genders male patients experience a significant 59.2% rise in gonorrhea cases, whereas female diagnosis has declined by 19.3%. One of the reasons behind this difference is it's said to be anatomical. Typically, an anatomical variations in the urethra between males and females contribute to a lower prevalence of gonorrhea among women, as the female urethra is shorter than in males. Health advocates for the LGBTQ plus community also suggest it is a sign that STDs are more significantly affected the queer community. Fair Health President Robin Gelberg emphasized the organization's commitment to public health research, aiming to shed light on critical health issues. Well, first, we talked about this subject a lot. We've had a couple of discussions of the 65 plus community STDs in the community and that rise um, in that. But I think it's still important to talk. We have to be empowered and empower our friends, our cohorts to talk sexual health to their providers. We've got to be able to talk to them. Uh, you know, they've got to be able to address their, not to talk, not to go in as a shame. It's like, do you, do whatever, you know, there's no shame in your game. Come on, let's just go and, have that conversation. Let's talk about prevention. Let's talk about what we can do with doxypep out on the market, you know, things like that, that we can do to address mm -hmm. these, these, these increases. Mm. Um, I think it's interesting that they always talk about the LGBTQ community when it comes to an STD, it comes to a new diagnosis, like when we had MPOX, mm -hmm. that it's, oh, it's the gays. They're the ones that's spreading this, but it's, when you look at sexual history, you know, you don't typically see males on either the heterosexual side or the gay side having extreme cases of more sexual encounters mm -hmm. over the life over their lifetime. So I think it's it's interesting to say we there's some challenges there, but we as an LGBTQ community are more open to be out in public. I mean, as advocates, we know that there's a sort of like a generational divide. Mm -hmm. Boomers are uh, tend to I mean, boomers lectured LGBTQ people and younger generation about, you know, how promiscuous we are, but we don't talk about sexual right. behavior among boomers, especially older boomers. And they tend to be, I, I mean, I'm not going to cast aspersions, but you know, the, you know, uh, they tend to be generally not aware or don't care. Right. And, or they think that, you know, as the, that generation thought, you know, STDs are only for promiscuous LGBTQ plus people. You know, right. they are white heterosexual Christians living in the set, uh, living in the villages. Of course, right. they don't need it. I mean, on the other hand, maybe we should just spray disinfectants, you know, <laughs> across the villages in that little plane. Okay. Lysol. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because you know, when you think about the boomers, they were the free love generation. They were the summer of love in 67 yeah. and all that shit. And look what you did. We'll look what you are doing to yourselves. I mean, it's just, you're like all walking STDs. And I'm so glad that I recently learned that I'm a member of Generation Jones and not, in fact, a disgusting baby boomer. It made me oh. really happy. <laughs> Uh, it was a relief on many levels, especially when it comes to STDs. Well, I had a friend that recently just had an event up in Pompano, and she, um, at the event, was um, predominantly black women in their 60s and 70s and 80s. And they were shocked. They didn't even think, they didn't think AIDS was around anymore. 
they really were like completely oblivious to it. Which is from a heterosexual community, which is absolutely insane. Right. You know, especially I'm, in Florida, in South Florida. Exactly. You know, I'm 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 disheartened to see that that there's been such a stark rise among uh, you know an SDI rates specifically among among baby boomers. But I was excited to see on the same report yeah. that there's actually been a decrease in Gen Z. Mm, I right. think it was I think it was about six point six percent in fifteen to twenty four, and like three point eight in, just, in the group just above that. And that still <laughs> bearing in mind though that. Uh, young people, Gen Z, still make up about 40, 49% of all new STI do- diagnoses. It's actually 150 times mm. the rate of mm. baby boomers. So while we're talking about these stark increases, these decreases, still recognizing that the folks who are most disproportionately impacted in this moment continue to be uh, BIPOC, LGBTQ, and young yep. people. It is why it's so important they were educating young mm-hmm. people Absolutely. about how to protect themselves, about yes. testing, yes. right? About, about you know, destigmatizing STIs right. in right. particular, Correct. using condoms, right? Contact tracing, all of these various things that they can do to protect themselves, to maintain their sexual health, right. which, and it's also important for us to advocate for LGBT inclusive, yes. comprehensive, medically accurate mm-hmm. sexual health education, which here in Florida can yes. be increasingly hard to come by, but um, folks, but there are folks that are doing that work to make sure that young right. people are right. Know your status. Knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just wanted to, you know, dive in because I'm, you know, turning 40, you know, in October. <laughs> <laughs> but my parents were like the baby boomers and they yeah. didn't really talk much about like the birds and the right. bees and the bees and the bees, you know, and that type of thing. And you kind of just discovered it on your own. Mm-hmm. And I remember growing up in mm-hmm. high school, we learned about sexual health. Now sure. my students, they take that out of the schools. So the kids are just like, just do it free for all, just not knowing anything about this. And I definitely think, you know, it the, needs the, to be taught in the school. The, yeah. The decline of sexual education is a real hazard. I mean, yes. when public schools stop actually, in the, uh, actually, or sp- all levels of the education, yeah. uh, education hierarchy, decide to ignore personal issues like sexual health. We, I mean, it's the, it's the young people who mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they see, you know, you don't actually get very accurate, uh, portrayal of, uh, healthy sexual behavior right. via either mainstream media or even pornography. Right, the internet. Uh, I mean, the internet can be both good and bad in right. that term. I mean, I was privileged to have actually really, really solid sexual health education. I, I mm-hmm. hail from Palm Beach County, <laughs> where they have, where they historically, it's super <laughs> comprehensive and LGBT inclusive sex ed. I mean, I, they talked about trans issues in a positive light. They mm-hmm. talked about queer relationships, mm-hmm. relationship, relationship mm-hmm. abuse, STIs, HIV, all of that, condoms, all that good stuff. And so I did did still wind up getting STI I had chlamydia and I got gonorrhea <laughs> right right after hitting adult after becoming an adult. But because I had that that education, yeah. I knew what to do about yeah, it, right? Exactly. Chlamydia is so easy to get rid of, yeah. right? You take a pill and you don't have sex for second, mm-hmm. right? right? It's it's and, and when you know what that when you have that knowledge and you have that information about sexual health, how to protect yourself, it can make those experiences yeah. so mm-hmm. much less scary and sometimes prevent them from happening. There's so many reasons. there's so many programs out there, whether yeah. you have insurance or not, that provides you with prep. Yeah. Pep and other yep. life-saving medication that prevents. I mean, even if you caught it, you it, it won't impact you as badly. Right. 